Let's paint a watercolor hydrangea together. Hi friends, welcome back. My name is Shada Campbell and around here we make art and it's fun, not scary. And today I'm going to do a watercolor hydrangea. I haven't done anything like that in a while. And we're going to give it a little bit of an illustrative flair by placing the flowers in a vase and kind of um, illustrating the, the pattern on the vase. And we'll maybe even do a little background. So let's just jump right in. And I'll share my supplies and I'll walk you through this step by step. So I have my favorite set of paints here. They are from Muno. It's a 48 pan set. I also have a little uh, watercolor sketchbook from Strathmore. It has a nice hard cover and 140 pound cold press paper. You can see I've masked out a nice border using washi tape. That's just going to give us a nice white border. I just did a video about five essential watercolor tips. I talked about the importance of masking. Uh, and then grab a paintbrush. I'm going to do most of this with a couple round brushes, a larger one like a number 10 and a smaller one like a number six or four and you'll need a pencil. It's nice to kind of start in pencil and sketch out the the main forms and first I want to make the flowers. So hydrangeas I'm going to draw these big lumpy circles and they're going to take up the upper half of the page and I could maybe sketch in a few small leaves below them and then I'm trying to work out the shape of a vase uh, so you could do your vase any shape I'm kind of going for this nice rounded um, shape that has a fluted top and I just work it out in pencil until I'm happy with it I'm also going to put a shadow at the base of the vase which means that we will have sort of darker areas at the base of the flowers and then lighter areas on the top so you could even sketch those in like the light highlights will be on the top of the flower the darker shaded shadowy areas will be at the bottom the base of those flowers and then we of course have shadow at the bottom of the vase in the foreground there uh, bah, 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 bah. I did a little like table line kind of at the bottom of the vase. We're going to erase a bunch of our pencil sketch lines once we're happy with the sketch. Get rid of all that eraser dust because with watercolor, once you paint over your pencil, if you can still see it, because of course watercolors are transparent, it's sort of locked in. It is locked in, the pencil will remain. So you want a very light outline of what you have drawn. Now let's mix up some purples and blues for these beautiful spring hydrangeas. I'm doing a mix of violet, white, and light blue. Lots of water, lots of white in there. So I've got this really sort of subtle um, periwinkle, very light blue purple. And that is the color I'm going to use for the first hydrangea, the one on the left here. And you can see I'm just doing some really messy brush marks, adding a bit of pressure to that large round brush, doing a few small flicks of the brush on the outer perimeter of the hydrangea to make it look like there are some little petals kind of going off of the main blossom. And yeah, just doing kind of rounded uh, bits and brush strokes to make this big, ball of a hydrangea blossom. Then I'm adding a little more pigment to my paint. So a little more uh, purple, a little more blue, even a little bit more white and gray. Just I want less water in there, but I want the color tone to remain the same. And then I'm releasing a bit of that darker color towards the bottom of the flower, because as I said, the shadows are at the bottom and the, in the foreground. And I'm even doing a little lifting there on the top of the blossom. So I just pressed a clean brush against the paint and picked up a bit of that pigment to make sure I've got nice highlights across the top. And then I'm gonna grab a bit of green on the brush while that periwinkle color is still wet. I wanna add a few leaves um, right here where the flowers are kind of popping out of the vase. I'm making the leaves kind of slightly different colors. I do like to mix a little bit of red or brown into my green just to make it a little bit more subtle, you know, a little bit more earthy. But if I get a bit of blending between that purple and that green, that is totally fine with me. So that's why I'm adding the leaves while the flower is still very lightly wet. So now I've got that nice sort of border of leaves. I'm actually doing a bit more lifting across the top of the flower because a bit of a line was forming. You know how watercolors do that. So I just used a clean wet brush to scrub at that area and pick up some of the pigment that was there. So I, I retain my highlight. Then I'm taking a mix of light blue with a bit of white and gray and just a hint of purple. And I, it's really this nice light dusty blue. And that's the color I'm going to use for the 
the second flower. And you can see the leaves are still wet, lightly wet, so I'm able to get a bit of blending between the green and the blue. I really like that soft look when it comes to watercolor, especially on the first layer. And again, just doing this big ball of a blossom. I'm going to mix up a slightly darker purple and start making some rounded brush marks and some little floral shapes. Again, especially focusing across the bottom area of that flower. And then I'll mix up that darker dusty blue or pastel blue. And again, focusing on the lower area of the the ball. <laughs> um, and then I, I like the way this is going. I might add a little bit of purple into the blue flower. And then I'm going to finish up by adding a few more leaves to border these, these hydrangeas. And that means for me, a couple um, kind of a little higher up and yeah, kind of in and amongst the others. And you can always just do like a thin line for the leaves. They don't all have to be fully formed leaves. A line sort of just looks like an angled leaf. Then I want to paint a background color and I had sort of a dark yellow, like a raw sienna on the palette. I'm adding a whole bunch of white and water to that paint that was there. So a warm yellow plus lots and lots of white gives me this really nice light creamy color. And that's the color I want to use for my backdrop. I think it's just going to complement the blues and purples really nicely, that warm creamy background. And I'm just carefully going around the leaves and flowers. You can leave just that little hint of white in between or if the um, flowers and leaves are already dry you can kind of go right up to the subject and you don't have to worry too much about blurring and blending so just get in there with the tip of the brush and fill in the entirety of your background because you've got the border masked out so you can take a nice big swath of color start on top of the tape and swipe onto the paintable area and you'll get a clean white border when the tape comes off let me just pop in here to remind you that I have a couple of floral e-courses available on my website. Um, they're a great way to get, you know, all of the basics of watercolor um, and beyond. The second e-course is about finding your own style and painting flowers and we really get into the nitty gritty. So if you feel like you need more guidance or you just want to do some learning and invest in your artistic career this summer, uh, head over to shadecampbellcourses.com to check out all the online learning resources that I've created for you. I'm using a light pink now to fill in the table area. Now the table will be brown, but this medium pink just gives a nice base for what will be quite a dark color. So I've mixed red, white with a little bit of brown and I'll go over it once it has dried. Then I'm going to take some French gray mixed with a lot of water and we're going to add some shading on the left hand side of the vase, also a bit across the bottom and um, a little bit of gray actually under all the leaves. My light source, the light source that I have chosen, the artist gets to choose where the light is coming from, uh, unless you're painting from life, of course. Uh, but my light source is above and to the right. So all the shadow is sort of on the bottom and left, bottom left of things. So that's what I'm I'm focusing on here with my French gray. So the leaves would be casting a bit of shadow on, onto that vase. Uh, that's given my pink area, my table, enough time to dry. So now I'm taking a mix of red, brown, and white, and I am going to paint the table. So going over the pink, and you can see how the pink gives a nice, mm, a nice warmth and a, a backdrop to the brown. This is a good idea when you're using white paper, you know, darker colors, they're going to look better and stand out and have more depth if you place them on top of another color. So it's never a bad idea to do that first layer. Then I'm taking a really dark brown. So this is a mix of Van Dyke brown and violet. I love the way that purples darken browns. And that's the color I'm using for the shadow. The shadow starts at the vase and comes out towards the viewer. And then I decided to darken up the table a little bit more, just doing these thin horizontal brush strokes and filling in the entirety of that area. Now that our flowers and leaves have dried, it's time to start adding detail and definition. With watercolors, we often work from general to very detailed, and that's exactly what we're doing for these hydrangeas. We've got the general shape and color of the flowers, and now we need to amp them up a bit. So I'm taking a darker color, like a blend of purple and blue without as much water, without as much white, and I'm using a smaller brush, a number six round, to kind of just paint some little four and five petal flowers, do some 
rounded brush marks, you know, hint at the idea of the hydrangea flower being made up of all these tiny little blossoms. And I'm adding that darker color across the bottom left. Then I'm gonna use that same brush, but this time I'm just gonna use the very fine point, the tip of the brush, and I'm going to sketch some little four petal flowers. And then I'm going to add a, that darker color surrounding the sketch. So in that way, I get like a nice little tiny blossom that's really highlighted. And it's a great way to um, give your hydrangea that detail that it needs so that it does look like it's made up of all these many multiple blossoms. So across the top, you're going to like use the paintbrush almost like a pen and draw these little four petal flowers and then use that darker color to kind of surround the little blossoms and really make them stand out. And then at the base and the bottom left, you're just adding those darker floral shapes and messy brush marks. And you can just have kind of like a, a cluster of darker color. Now that hydrangea, that blue one on the right could be done, or you can keep going, keep working a wet on dry and you just get darker and darker every time. So I mixed an even darker purpley blue and then I'm kind of surrounding these messy floral shapes with that dark color to make it again look like there's all these little blossoms standing out amongst, you know, the big bloom itself. So you just keep working, adding that detail, adding that shading. And the nice thing about this is you do it in layers. You don't have to rush into it and it doesn't have to happen all at once. You can use a hairdryer to dry it and then do another layer, go make a cup of tea, you know, come back, add some darker paint. Too often, I think when you're starting out, it feels like I gotta sit down and I gotta paint a masterpiece. No, you gotta take your time, work in layers. You know, when everything's wet, that's when we start making mistakes and things get messy. So let stuff dry and then come back in and remember that rule of going from really general to detailed. So here we started with these really soft hydrangeas which looked pretty, you know, they could have been done with just that first layer, but adding all these other brush strokes and the kind of little sketchy blossoms, um, I think it just makes them look so beautiful. And as I said in the introduction to this video, we're doing sort of a more illustrative piece today. So we're going the distance with the details. Now I'm also going to do a wet on dry technique on the leaves. I mixed up a darker green, a little bit of deep phthalo green and brown in there. And then I'm just doing um, a line down the center of the leaf and a whole bunch of little lines on both sides, kind of darkening up some of the leaves um, across the top or I'll do a little just messy mark to make them look like they're partially in shadow. So just adding that darker color, even without a whole lot of pla planning, it can go a long way because you're adding a bit of shading, you're adding a little bit of detail. So you're adding veining lines, you're adding a bit of shadow. Um, and I think this is really bringing the whole piece to life now. And you wanna match the detail that you achieved on those flowers. You do wanna match that, I think, on the leaves. And uh, yeah. <laughs> so as the flower dries, I also like to come in with a really dark blue or dark purple and just put like one little dot at the center of some of those blossoms. That will really bring the hydrangea to life. And then here we go, the final step, I'm taking this really dark royal blue and I want to add some detailing on the vase. I've really been having fun painting these um, or illustrating these kind of blue and white porcelain vases. So I'm doing a, sort of a scallop pattern right across the bottom, making it a little rounded, making sure to work with the shape uh, of the vase. And then I'm gonna put a line next. So the pattern that you put here, could it could be lines, stripes, it could be a line line of dots, you know, just anything that comes to mind. Just make sure to keep everything slightly rounded because we've drawn the vase round. You know, the base of that vase <laughs> is round, um, has a curve to it. So you want to emulate that curve when you're painting all these stripes um, and scalloped borders and all that stuff. So then I'm doing kind of hinting at a little stripe up amongst <laughs> the leaves. 
And then the fun part, then I can just let loose and paint some messy flowers and leaves. And that's what I love to paint. I'm still using the smaller of my two paintbrushes, the number six round. And I'm going to place two or three large flowers before I start in with the leaves. So I kind of know where my, my large subjects are. And then I can just surround them with lots of little leaves. This is the type of thing that is great brushwork practice. You just do a thin little stem and then pairs of leaves all the way along. Another curving stem, whole bunch more leaves and have fun with it. You can do some that are smaller, some that are larger. The nice thing about this is even if you mess up or something looks a little weird, because it's a pattern on a vase, there's a lot of leeway there and it's going to look pretty. It's going to look like very whimsical, I think. There's something about painting a vase that would have been hand painted in life. It's just, it has a very high whimsy factor, I think. And then I really have been enjoying adding stuff like this to my paintings lately. So yeah, doing a couple large flowers and then just surround them with a whole bunch of these little leaves and branches. And I think the result is quite impressive. <laughs> The final thing that I want to do now that the vase is painted and it looks so pretty is mix a little more indigo into my royal blue and I am going to darken up some of these shapes on the left hand side and especially focusing on the bottom, really the whole left because the flat, the area at the top is in shadow because the leaves and flowers are hanging out over top of them. So adding that darker color on top just helps um, reinforce the shadow. We did put a little French gray on the vase. It's looking very light right now, um, but by darkening up some of the design, I think we can reinforce the idea that that area of the vase is in shadow and it's really dark. I'm even going to darken up the left side of those stripes and the scallop pattern across the bottom. And yeah, I think that really works. And I think that's it for me. That is my hydrangea painting in the vase with the background, with the shadow, all done. And now the best part of any project, taking off that tape and revealing the clean white masked out border. It looks so good. It makes your paintings look so profesh. It gives you a great spot to sign them. And there you have it. She just looks so pretty and it was great practice and great fun. And we really got to add a lot of detail to this one. So I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for being here. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and think about purchasing my e-course if you need more guidance. Thank you.